there is a secret to PDR, it is simply that we can see exactly what we're repairing. That is what allows us to take it to the next level. I'm going to give you as close of a look as, as to what a PDR technician sees today. We're going to take and work towards, we've got this door ding, hail dent, size, size damage here. Before we are done, or when, we, when we're done with this lesson, you'll have the skill set to be able to take that dent to a completely blockable level. So my definition of blockable is a 100% fillerless repair. That is going to be on your blend panel. You block with a 800 or a thousand grit paper and then clear coat the panel. Two coats of clear, you know, a, a few mils of build. I'm going to have you get this close enough that we can block that with our 800 or thousand grit. And then when we would come back in with the two coats of clear, the dent would be gone or to a, to a completely unnoticeable level. Now that is not a paintless repair because you need the the thickness of the paint of the clear coat to finish it out. As you evolve, as you chase your craft even further and, and move up to the very, very top right, that top right pixel we talked about on the screen yesterday, this is the foundation to move there. The evolution of, of learning is you will go from a fillerless repair to being able to get it close enough that wet sanding and taking thickness out of the clear coat and polishing it back up will make your dent invisible. Technically, a paintless repair because you've not added paint. And then the ultimate will be when, and if you choose to chase it that far, you can take that same dent to a level where it's not noticeable without having to even remove any paint with, with paper. It all comes down to being able to read the light and be accurate. Let me move over to the whiteboard here and, and show you a little bit of a, a diagram and, and what that looks like. So this is that same cross section of a dent, right? That's the bottom of my fingers. What we are identifying is exactly the deepest bottom part of the dent. Coming out of PDR about pushing, but today we're gonna to use a glue tab and pull. So that comes down to being able to place your glue tab right in the very dead center, the very dead bottom of the dent. So just like Scott just pushed up on my fingers, we're gonna pull the same way. If we miss, right, if we guess, if we don't use the light, if we can't identify the very center bottom of that dent, what can happen is if, if we miss on this side, when we make a pull on the side, this left side will stay basically unchanged and you can pull the right side over. So if we missed here, when you pull, you pull it in sideways. Now you start to get into trouble, right? You've not pulled the depth out. You've made it a made it a deeper dent essentially yeah. if we're talking about ratio then the only way to recover from that is to use your knockdown and you actually have to knock it bigger so if we started here and you made that bad pull we might end up with this broader area to get open back up now you're making it even you're making little damage bigger and then you're chasing and struggling using the light is what will allow us to see that and know that we are there and i'm also going to show you a little trick that's gonna give you a crotch to use while you're learning to read the light. Does that make sense? Now, when we're pulling, we can also make a high spot. I'm gonna also teach you how to identify and read that high spot in the light. It's basically the same thing. This dent, if we climbed inside the panel and looked, it's just a high spot on the other side. Or if we flip it around, the high spot is a dent on the other side. It's the exact same theory, being able to come up and tap down right on top of that peak becomes critical. Does that make sense to everybody why it's yeah. so important? Yeah. So let's move over here. So Scott, show me the, the circumference of the dent that you're seeing there. This you get a little bit of help because we got the overhead lights, but let's see what, what the naked eye sees in a room. I think I missed it. Mm -hmm. no, that's a, it doesn't matter what you see or don't see. Like, that is how that dent is perceived by the naked eye. Without, yeah, without special light. Is that what you mean? Yeah, exactly. Without introducing LED lighting. So parallel and perpendicular. Then the light can really be three other things. Do you remember, I remember the Goldilocks story? It can be 
too far away, which is going to give us too much information. It can be in too close, which takes all of our information away. And then it's just right. And that's what gives us the picture that, that I'm going to try to burn into your brains and give you a peek into, into PDR. So this light is for sure for this small dent too far back. I'm going to identify the outside edges of distortion here now. So we definitely distort without even pushing the envelope. We distort this wide. So I'd like you all to come and look here and get way down and look at that light. And look at how that distortion goes. We're three times bigger than what Scott identified with the naked eye. If we could go back and look at my learning curve on glue pull, the first eight or nine years like this, getting a little better, but just still a last resort. And the tabs got a little bit smaller, but still not great and not anywhere near where we are today. But fast forward to, to 2011, we had a huge hailstorm come through Pittsburgh. I mean, we fixed cars for a year. It was a two mile swath of damage that went for about 40 miles. Like it was great. One of our dealerships got hit and we needed to bring in some some, some subcontractors to, to help us get the cars done. And one of the guys we called in was my original dent instructor, Fred. He had left teaching and gone to chase storms. So I called him up and said, hey, Fred, we've got you know, 150 cars or 170 cars we need to get done. Will you come in and help us? Sure. Comes in, he's working. Excellent technician. Does great work. But man, he really shines at glue pulling, at, at pulling the rails of the unicide. Like he is cruising through these things. So I went over to him and I said, Fred, listen, I got you on the deal. You got to give me a lesson on glue pulling. You're doing something different that I'm not seeing anybody else do. What is it? And, and he, he did give me a little lesson, but the big takeaway is he gave me, he, he said one sentence to me or one statement that, that changed my whole outlook at it. He said, quit looking at glue pulling like a rough in and start thinking about it as a precision move. We don't push randomly, we push very precisely. He said, start, he said, just shift your thinking and start thinking about glue pull as a precision move. I'm like, I never thought of that before, right? That's why he's the teacher and I'm the, I'm the, the student. So I said, okay. So I start thinking about it and one of the things he had done is, so we went from big tabs like this to now a big tab, or a, a small tab was maybe the size of a dime. But Fred took it one step further and he put that tab in a drill and took a blade and turned it down to today what would be about a nine millimeter tab. But they simply didn't exist in 2011. Nobody was making tabs that small because we were big surface area and rough it in. But we were able to pull, he's pulling these small things. Like my learning curve, right? like this for nine years and then Fred teaches me that and I'm off to the moon. Fast forward three months later in that storm, things are slowing down, the, the subcontractors are all gone. It's just us local guys, our local crew. I'm at one of our satellite stores or satellite shops, just a, a garage space that a buddy owns that we can fix on cars. My R&I guy is a body man. So he's at the body shop all day, finishes work at five, comes to us about 5.30 tears down whatever we need, comes back in early before work the next day and puts it back together. It's a great gig. I'm there by myself. I've got an older Mercedes. I will picture this car until the day I die. Comes in, call it light to moderate hail damage, a couple dozen dents on each top panel, very minimal side work. It's the afternoon. I don't mind doing a hood pad or a fender liner or a trunk liner. I don't need to wait for Matt for that. I'll go to work and I'll start working on this car. Well, that far into the storm, I've gotten pretty efficient at doing hail, and I sort of fly through that part of the car. Get everything done but the roof. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to take a headliner down. I hate doing headliners. I hop in the car, and I'm, I'm not a trim guy, I'm not a tear down guy. I hop in the car, I'm looking around. I can't find a screw or a bolt or anything. And it's a little, again, a little older car. I don't want to start pulling on some brake plastic. So you know what, I guess I'm gonna, it's 2.30, I guess I'm gonna sit here and wait for Matt. So we get out and I'm, I'm really looking at the roof. I'm like, you know what, I'm getting, I'm getting pretty good at this glue pull stuff. And I really start looking at the roof. Maybe, maybe I can glue pull this roof. So I go to town, right? 
I fix every dent on the roof except for the biggest one. Save the hardest for last. Again, I can picture this car today. Driver's side of the car, above the rear door, about six inches in from the rail, and about six inches up from the glass. And a pretty good dent, eh, a little bit bigger than that, 50% bigger than that, which back then was a very difficult dent for me to pull to 100% paintless. But I'm looking at it, man, I'm starting to sweat it. Because now I'm down to one dent. If I glue pull this, man, I'm the hero. I get to go home early. I don't have to pay Matt to do the headliner. I can keep the headliner. I can have dinner with my family. Or if I screw it up, I'm now paying Matt to take the headliner down so I can make a few pushes on one dent. Like the, the stress is real. If I was a cartoon that day while I'm stressing about this dent and I'm sitting back here and I'm like, if I was a cartoon, the light bulb would have showed up over my head. So that, that light bulb goes off. I've got a Sharpie and I've got my glue tabs. And I go, you know what? If I grab a Sharpie like this, that feels an awful lot like grabbing a glue tab like this. I said, I wonder if I could see where I was gonna put the, dent, put the tab before I placed it. Pretty good idea. <laughs> Again, the light bulb moment. So I grab my Sharpie. I've got my light set up parallel. I come around perpendicular and I come in and I go just like this. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger so y'all can see it. Come up and look where my dot is. My, you're not perpendicular. Come in, in and look where it's at. Not in the center. It's about a tab width, a shaft too far back. Right, if we remember looking at, at the whiteboard, if I pull that, right, I fold the dent in, then I gotta make that dent that's our, that I'm already saying is out of my comfort zone for what I can fix, and then I'm gonna make it bigger. Yeah, you gotta come back towards. Come back to you. Right. It's a it's a it's a little weird depth perception thing. Mm. So I stood there, honest to goodness, I bet for half an hour, practicing, until I could come up every time, call it on autopilot, and come right in, got my dent, bam, right in the middle, bam, 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 every single time. Muscle memory, depth perception, I got it dialed in. Long story long, <laughs> I glue pull the dent, perfect. I get to keep the headliner, I don't have to pay him. I don't have to wait for him, I get to go home and have dinner with my family. It's a win all around. Now, that little lesson becomes a great crutch. We've been talking about clean, clean, clean. That's the first C since we started teaching you yesterday. Good news. One little tiny dot of Sharpie is not gonna hurt your adhesion. So you can use it as a crutch. So now we can take our time and read the light and then we don't need to read the light, we just need to place our tab over the Sharpie. So we've placed the, the dot in the middle of the dent, our oversized one. Now instead of haphazardly holding like this, I can come in and let this glue find center. See how it's going? right under the shaft. See that Hayden? I don't have to worry about the light. I can come in. I'll get out of your way so you guys can see. We will let this find center, make a little bit of a ball and we can come down. If we miss, so I'm a little bit to the right, no big deal. We can adjust left, front, back, right, get right where we wanna be and place our tab right over that dot. See how you can let that glue come down to a ball? And then you can precisely see exactly where it's gonna to touch and come down that way. Does that make sense? Oh yeah. Perfect. Time. And when you see just how great the adhesion is, we're gonna get on here by following the process to a T, by waiting for what temperature? 75. 75, so waiting for 85 before we pull. By following all the steps, it's that confidence to stand in front of a crowd of 40 or 50 people at a trade show and know that even on a small tab, I'm not gonna fail because the process works every single time. When you see if we were on steel, I would want to be about 75% the size of that, not the outside distortion, but the this inside distortion that we're seeing here. So if this were a steel panel, I would likely want to be smaller than that. About there. So I want you all to come up and look and see 
See the distortion around the tab? Yeah. So I want surface area on steel. I want to be able to pull that pit up. I want to get that, that belly up. See it? See that distortion yeah, I, on either side? Yeah. That's about my sizing for this dent on steel. On aluminum, because it is a more stubborn, rigid metal to move, I'm going to up size my tab. So I'm going to go more like that. More or less a gone away. 90% coverage of that distortion. I can see just a little yeah. tiny flicker of distortion on either side. Now the reason is, again, back to that slide, that what's our secret? Surface area. So power gets us there. And remember, now remember, these don't pull the face, they pull that, the center shaft. If this were really deep, this is probably a little too large. I would come in and use one of these. Now, if you look, that tab is going to be just about 100% coverage. Mm -hmm. But we are going to really focus the pull into the center of that tab. I don't feel like this dent is sharp enough to warrant the could over pull here. Though? What's that? Could you use it? You could. Absolutely you could. I feel like we're going to see and be able to pull and teach a little better with this one. But, but to understand the system, here, Scott, to understand the system, I like to talk through all of our possibilities. So cleaned our tab, our panel's clean. I'm going to grab our heat gun and we're going to heat to what temperature? 120. And what does that do? Get rid of the gets, gets rid of our humidity. Yes. Here we go. We went up over. There we go. It's 120. Now look how fast that's cooling down. We're down to 114, 13, 12, 10. It's moving fast. We're going to go ahead and heat our tab up. I'm going to switch Scott out. I'm going to go ahead and coat our tab. Swirl it away. Now we're going to come in, let that glue find center, come right down on top of our dot, and place that in. Just like that. Three, two. When that aluminum just dissipates the heat so quickly. 99. What temperature are we waiting for? 85. 85. Down to 96, 95. So by the time I get here and get this dialed in, we're going to be there. So I'm going to bring this on and slide in. We've got a little bit of slack. I just want to tighten this up. And all I'm doing is not wasting any of my leverage. We're not trying to pull with this. But we're taking it out to here. So now I want you guys to look through here. I'm going to work blind and trust your eyes. Lord help me. <laughs> look how little Sorry. effort, look how little effort it takes to start moving that metal. I mean, really just two fingers and we're starting to move. See that? Now, the reason we're looking through, we can see we've still got some distortion outside of the tab. I'm going to pull to a high spot and release. Still see a little bit of distortion around there ever so slightly. Pull a little bit harder, slowly increasing our aggression and releasing. If we're questioning it, we can slide that out of the way. Using my overhead lights because you guys are standing in my way. I can see that we are not pinching high at all. We might be just about flat, but we're not high. That tells me I can pull a little bit more. Here, again, increasing the aggression slowly. Sorry to pull to release. We didn't come in and pull right to release. See where that pulled? Where's my dot? Right in the center. Right in the center. Release this glue. Like so. Come back and give it a wipe. Thank you. And let's see what we're looking like. We've reduced it by 50% already. Yeah. It is harder to be less aggressive. Right, this, there's so much less surface area that I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive with this pull. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna ease it up a little bit, but I will likely pull harder to a, a bit of a release. And what I'm hoping for is to bring that pit up out of this stubborn metal and leave just a tiny high spot that's easy to knock down, is my goal. 
So let me make sure this tab is clean. I'm going to warm my tab up. Uh-oh. Yep. So I actually want a little warm. But look how fast that cools down. So he went to 138, I think, is where he stopped. We're already down below 120. I feel pretty confident in getting in the middle of that tab. Great squeeze out all the way around. Now we wait for what? 85. 85, yes. Smaller tab is going to cool down even faster. We're already down to 95. The smaller tab is going to cool down faster than the big tab, less surface area. I prefer to move it to the blue hammer because this is lighter. When we are coming in and introducing knocking down with the black swan, Body techs as a whole, right, are aggressive creatures. They want to smack things and hit it hard. If you're falling asleep, hit it and wake them up. But they want to hit things hard because they're swinging hammers and they're moving big metal. When we take our force and we focus it down to this little point, go ahead and hold your palm up. All the force that I'm going to start with is not much more than the weight of the hammer. We're not going to, we're not smacking this thing, right? It's just a little bump. Same thing like we, gently increase our aggression with the pull, we want to increase our aggression with this. What we don't want to do is come right in and, and put another thing. Like you're going to hurt things with that. We're going to use our light. We're going to look for that light to dark high spot or light to dark transition, just like we had in the low, right? The low is a high spot on the other side. The high spot's a low on the other side. We're going to come in. You guys see that, see the mountaintop there? Yep. See it? The very top of the peak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See it? Now, that's where this tool really shines. Now I can stay back here and I can watch this tip come right down on top of that high spot. See that? Mm -hmm. Now we're going to come in and I'm going to start with some light taps. So I want to come in, place perfectly on the high spot and tap and pick it up and look. We didn't really change it much. I want to increase my aggression, so I just want to hit just a little bit harder. Come in and tap. Got a little movement there. Now, just like strongest to weakest, deepest to shallowest, highest to lowest. We always want to knock down our highest peak, and then our next highest peak, and then our next highest peak. As we move through here, where right, that changes, and it's we're constantly adapting to what we've got. I'm going to come in and tap this down. Come in and tap a little bit more. I'm a little bit higher back here now. Tap right there. Right here. Getting down there. On aluminum, tight little high spots. Again, increasing our aggression. If this wasn't quite laying it down, I wanted to lay it down. I want to hit harder. Metal to metal with that polished face is a stronger strike. So I'm going to come in here, make sure we are straight down. Give it a little tap, a little tap, and a little tap. To take this to paintless, I'm going to back my light up and I'm going to continue knocking down and get into real nuanced work. Exact same procedure. Said, okay, we need to pull again. There's nothing to knock down. We went right back to the top, made sure it was clean, 
We heated it, changed my tab, stuck with the glue, stuck with the lifter, that didn't change. Pulled, shrunk it down even more, right? So went from his to this to this. Continue, right back to the top, clean. And then our last continue was, okay, we're there, we're ready to block our, we're ready to block our blend panel out. So we would have, or the, the technician or whoever would have blocked the entire panel and had it ready for paint. That is where continue changes from additional pulls to continuing your repair process. Make sense? Yep.